Does CPU cooler orientation really matter for passive cooling? That's a question I thought I had a reasonable answer for, but I've never extensively tested it. Let's start with some of the basics. In a fanless configuration, airflow only occurs because the air is heated by the cooler and becomes less dense. Due to the force of gravity, the less dense heated air naturally flows upward and is replaced by cooler air from below. CPU coolers work well only when air can easily pass through them. So in a fanless setup, the cooler should allow air to flow upward through the cooler and not around the cooler. Let's start with a more obvious example. The Arctic Alpine 12 Passive is a simple and inexpensive cooler that is basically an aluminum block with cooling fins cut out of it. The online manual for this cooler shows a horizontal orientation if you have a case fan, or a vertical orientation with no case fan. I tested both orientations with no case fan, with an Intel i9-10900 and half-hour Prime 95 stress tests at various power limits. The core temperatures were recorded and averaged during each minute of the tests. The room's ambient temperature was then subtracted from the core average. The vertical orientation is blue on this graph, and the horizontal is orange. In the vertical orientation, the cooler passed 45 watts, meaning the CPU should never thermally throttle in a 25 degree Celsius room at 45 watts. In the horizontal orientation, the cooler did not even pass the 35 watt test. I've added trend lines and linear formulas for each orientation. If I target a maximum 75 degrees Celsius above ambient, the vertical orientation can handle about 48 watts. The horizontal orientation can handle only 32 watts by comparison. That's a 50% increase in cooling for the vertical orientation. So it is very clear that the vertical orientation is the way to go for the Arctic Alpine 12 passive in a fanless PC. Moving on to the Fantex TC14PE, the TC14PE is a dual tower cooler with five 8mm heat pipes. It is a common high performance cooler design, and I was curious to see if there would be any benefit of a horizontal or vertical installation. In this case there aren't any obstructions to airflow in either orientation, so the best orientation was not obvious to me. The blue line, A, was the standard orientation, with the two towers installed vertically. B, C, and D were each rotated 90 degrees from the previous orientation. This graph is zoomed in to better show the temperature differences. In this case, the vertical orientations, A and C, performed slightly worse than the horizontal orientations, B and D. Again, assuming a throttling point of 75 degrees above ambient, the vertical orientations would throttle at an average of 79 watts, while the horizontal orientations would throttle at an average 83 watts. This isn't a huge difference, but there does appear to be at least some difference, favoring the horizontal orientation. Now for the Rigentech Tesis. The Tesis is also a dual tower cooler with five 8mm heat pipes. There is a difference that might affect the results of this cooler versus the Fantex cooler though. One of the two towers has the edges of the cooling fins folded over, preventing air from easily passing upward through the tower in a vertical orientation. Let's look at the results. The standard vertical orientation, A, had the highest temperatures. And one of the horizontal orientations, D, had the lowest temperatures. Using the trend line formulas to estimate the maximum power dissipation, the vertical orientations could handle up to about 77 watts, and the horizontal orientations could handle about 79 watts. The difference is consistent with the Fantex results, but the difference is even smaller here, which tells me that the folded over edges of one of the two towers doesn't seem to make a significant difference. Next, I looked at the Scythe Ninja 5. The Ninja has a unique design, with a single square tower and six 6 mm heat pipes. There aren't any obstructions to airflow through the fins, and its symmetry led me to believe that it would be a good control. The results are a bit varied, with different orientations performing slightly better or worse at different power levels. After calculating the maximum power dissipation for each, the difference between the lowest and highest was about 4 watts. I think this gives me an idea of what the standard error is of my methods.
and it tells me that the differences for the Fantex and Rigentech coolers might be within the margin of error. Finally, I tested the Thermalrite Legrand Macho. It also has a unique design with a single offset rectangular tower and seven 6mm heat pipes. It also has a series of perforations through each fin, and the edges of those fins do block the airflow path through this cooler when installed vertically. So, of all the larger coolers, I expect this one to have the largest differences in results. And, looking at the graph, it is clear that the B and D orientations, with a less obstructed airflow path, did much better than A and C. The differences were clearly outside the margin of error. They are not exactly as I expected though. One of the things that I've learned over the years about heat pipes is that they perform better when the condenser end is higher than the evaporator end. In orientation B, the condenser ends are higher than the evaporator ends, and in orientation D, the condenser ends are lower than the evaporator ends. When I calculate the maximum power dissipation for each orientation, indeed, orientation B comes out on top, but only by a couple watts. And as shown on the graph, orientation D did better at lower power levels. I can't explain this, but I did repeat the tests with this cooler and got the same results. So either what I thought I knew about heat pipes was wrong, or there is something else that I am not seeing here that can explain why D does better than B at most power levels. Unfortunately with this cooler on an AMD AM4 socket, the only orientations possible are A or C because of the asymmetry of the socket's mounting holes. Here is a summary of the results, with the calculated maximum power limits to avoid throttling in a 25 degree Celsius room. For the Fantex, Rigentech, and Scythe coolers, the orientation did not seem to make a significant difference. For the Arctic Alpine 12, it is clear that the vertical fins are much better. And for the Thermalrite Legrand Macho, it is significantly better in the upward or downward orientation, B or D. Keep an eye on this channel if you found this video interesting. I am currently testing a few of these coolers in two more orientations. With the case and motherboard lying flat, and the cooler sitting upward or downward from the motherboard socket. Thanks for watching, and visit FullySilentPCs.com if you are interested in purchasing a custom built fanless PC. Like this video and subscribe for more fanless PC content.